So this is an introduction to linear programming. Uh, it's going to get fairly in-depth pretty quickly, uh, but I want to give you a quick overview of what the idea is behind linear programming. It's just, it's fantastic. So here you can see my factory, and my factory builds furniture, uh, in particular two different kinds of furniture, uh, tables and chairs. Now, it can build all tables if it wants, or it could build all chairs if it wants. But what it's trying to do is pretty much what all factories are trying to do. They're trying to maximize profit. That's the most important thing when it comes to this factory at least. Now tables are highly profitable. You can uh, make $75 for every table that you sell. Chairs on the other hand, they're not so profitable. Every chair you sell is only making you $20. So that means that the profit that this factory is going to make is equal to 75 times the number of tables, I'm going to use the letter X for tables, plus $20 times chairs, which is Y. So if I, sell, if I make one table and one chair, I'll make 75 times 1, 20 times 1, I'll make 95 bucks. You guys can do the maths from there. Now obviously the best thing for this factory to do is to just build endless amounts of tables. If they could just build an infinite number of tables, that would be an infinite profit and it would be fantastic. But obviously all factories have constraints and linear programming is about generating those constraints and then optimizing our function. So what are our constraints here? Well I'm going to create some constraints right now. This factory has a standing order where they have to make 20 tables every week. So we, so that means that x, the value of x, needs to be greater than or equal to 20. Because they've got a standing order, they've got to fill that order, so they have to make at least 20 tables. Now similarly for chairs, they have a standing order. They have to build at least 30 chairs. So we now know that we have to have at least more than 20 tables and we have to have at least more than 30 chairs. Now I can do this using my graphing package here. So I can say that x is greater than 20. And that's going to look like that. That's going to look like that. So our x value needs to be greater than 20. It can't exist here. And similarly our y value needs to be greater than 30. So that means that our chair building and our table building has to exist somewhere over here. Let's just zoom in on that. It has to exist somewhere in this darker blue region. region. That's um, y is greater than 30 and x is greater than 20. But the factory must have more constraints than that because clearly we can't make an infinite number of tables and we can't make an infinite number of chairs. There must be something stopping us. So let's add another constraint here. So another constraint in this particular factory is that they only have enough floor space to make a maximum of 27 tables. That's a, the max they can possibly do. So tables has to be less than or equal to 27. Now that's going to add a constraint to our, to our problem. So x is less than or equal to 27. All right, so you can see now the only place we're allowed to work in is here. X can be between 20 and 27 because that's how many tables we're allowed to make. And chairs need to be above 30, but it's still stretching off into in infinity. But obviously we can't make infinity chairs. There's another constraint, and this constraint is going to be a little more difficult. So this constraint is all about workers. I've only got 15 workers in the factory, and they only work... Um, seven hours a day. So that means that I've only got 105 hours total working hours to work on tables and chairs. Now tables take longer to make than chairs. Tables take two hours and chairs take one hour. So that means that one of our constraints is going to be two times the number of tables we build 
because it takes two hours to build a table, plus one times the number of chairs we build, because it only takes one hour to build a chair, so y, 2x plus y has to be less than or equal to 105 hours. If we go over 105, we'd have to employ another worker, and we can't do that. So our last constraint is 2x plus y is less than 105 there. So it's this dark, dark blue region that we're allowed to work in. So we're, for instance, I can build 23 tables and 36 chairs if I want. Or I could build 25 tables and about 52 chairs if I want. I can work anywhere within this region, but there is a spot on that region where if I work at that spot, I will maximize the most important thing to this factory, which is profit. And so we need to find the point on that, in this constrained area, that will allow us to maximize our profit. Now we could just put in every single point. We could put in 20 and 30. We could put in 21 and 30, 22 and 30. We could put in uh, every single point there, but there is a lot of points in there. But there is a trick when it comes to this maximization. Maximization on this particular um, constrained area will definitely occur in one of four places. Always happen at one of the corners. So either this is maximum profit, this is maximum profit, this is maximum profit, or this is maximum profit. So all we need to do is take those intersection points of our lines and then sub that into our original equation and we find out which one gives us the highest value for p. I've just gotten rid of all the inequalities and I've written them as equalities instead just because it makes it easier for us to do this next step. This is the this is still the area that we're interested in. I'm just going to use my intersection tool here to find each of those points. Okay, let's see what the values of each of those points are. We've got A, 2065, that's 20 tables, 65 chairs. We've got B, 27 tables, 51 chairs. We've got C, 20 tables, 30 chairs. And we've got D, 27 tables, 30 chairs. Now I think you can see straight away that C and D are not going to cut it. Now that's not always the case because sometimes the maximization problem is very, very different. So we can't always knock these out. But if I just do the maths in my head, I know that if I put 20, 30 into that formula, I'm not going to get as good a result as if I put 20, 65 into that formula. So the answer must be A, 20, 65, or B, 2751. So let's test those two and see which one gives us the maximum profit. So if I put um, 2065 in here, I get a profit of $2,800. And 3,045 if I put in 2751. Now, 3,045 is a bigger number than 2,800. This is my answer. And I can write that down in a sentence. Um, max profit at um, 27 tables, tables, and can't write profit at 27 tables and 51 chairs. All right, very, very involved, but very, very useful, very, very real world. What we're really doing here is trying to maximize or minimize something given a certain level of constraints, it creates this situation where you might end up with three, four, five, six uh, 
simultaneous equations that create this area here. Inside of that area will be your optimal point, the point that, that maximizes or minimizes whatever it is. And it happens to be that the corner points are where that maximum or minimum will be. That's linear programming, an intro to it. Thank you very much. Good luck.